My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Some years ago, a tourist had gone missing from a bus tour in Iceland, resulting in a frantic search involving more than 50 rescuers on foot and by air. It all started when the tourist, a woman, broke off from her tourist group and changed clothes. So when she returned to the bus in a different outfit, of course, the rest of her tour group did not recognize her. Then, when a description of the quote-unquote missing person was offered, Asian, in dark clothing, and speaks English well, the woman, seemingly also, did not recognize the description as of herself. So, she began to assist the others in searching. Hours later, the search party fin finally realized that Alas, the woman they were looking for was with them all along, and so the search was called off. Well, the woman simply didn't recognize the description of herself and had no idea that she was missing. And that can also happen to us spiritually, that uh, we can be lost and separated from God. But sometimes we fail to recognize ourselves in the description, and the result is that we have no idea that we're actually lost. At times, we can be one of God's lost sheep who has to be found and returned to the fold. You know, this is a realization that I have as I reflect on the gospel where Jesus said to his disciples, If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, Will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, Amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your Heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. So the man left the ninety-nine sheep and looked for the one that got lost. That is also how you deal with us, Lord, when we go astray. You always get us back. That's what happens when we turn to our Lord in prayer when we are confused and we come out of prayer with clarity. Or when we sin big time or not so big time and we surrender to our Lord our sins in confession. Just recall how you felt when you were spiritually lost and our Lord helped you to recover. And when are we lost? When we are lost spiritually, when we want to do our own thing, to go our own way, even when it is self-destructive. But if we have strayed from Him, He still loves us. No sin will change that. Even if uh, we lose our way in life, our Lord is watching out for us always with His particular way of caring for everyone. If we leave the 99 behind in search of the one that's lost, so with His particular way of caring for everyone, especially for those who have gone astray. So the man left the 99 sheep and looked for the one that got lost. No matter how far any of us may stray from our Lord, that's not far enough to draw us away from His care. Forgiveness is available. Because you, Jesus, are the Good Shepherd who's seeking us. And no matter how far away from God we think we are, we only have to step out from the shadows to turn to Him and He will look after us. So when we are lost, our Lord, just the same, is continuously allowing grace to flow in us so that we can be recovered. But we have to cooperate with that grace. 
cooperating with that grace means we are sorry for having gone our way and that we resolve to avoid getting lost again. That cooperation with grace can probably be illustrated by uh, the legend of uh, the story of a young man who comes before a large crucifix to confess his sins. Then the young man is shocked when the hand of the crucifix pulls away from the nail. And from the table, the hand picks up a cup and gives that cup to the young man. So our crucified Lord tells him that he thirsts and he wants him to fill the cup with water and bring it back. So the young man goes to a spring, but when he scoops for water, the spring goes dry. He walks to a valley with the river, but as soon as he extends the cup, the river disappears into the earth. Finally, after crossing several mountains, he arrives at the ocean. But when he approaches the waves, the ocean begins to recede. So finally he was convinced that he had no way to receive forgiveness. So he begins to cry. He cries so hard that his tears fill the cup. And you know, at that very moment, he realizes that what the Lord wants from him is his contrition. And something similar needs to happen if you and I are to allow the Good Shepherd to recover us. That we have to have a sense of sin, a real awareness of how sinful we are, and of how much we need the Lord's forgiveness and grace. If we don't have a clear sense of sin, we're actually preventing the Good Shepherd from carrying us on his shoulders. But if we have a realistic sense of sin, which means we know that we cannot cure ourselves by our own power, and that we have to depend more on our Lord than on ourselves, then our Lord can work more freely in us. It's only when we turn back to our Lord and admit that we are lost a little or a lot that we can experience the full force of God's love helping us to get back on track. And to avoid getting lost spiritually, let's ask for lights from our Lord to discover what really causes us to sin. Because each of us should know where we are most prone to temptation. Realize that our impatience, our irresponsibility, our self-indulgence, every indifference to our neighbors, but all of that contribute to our getting lost. But our Lord can help. He can forgive us. It's never too late. That happens in confession, where we are given a chance to start over as many times as we need to. I'm sure most of us already know this, and we try to go to, go to confession frequently. But we also know of people who don't. Then we also have to be the good shepherd for them. To live with the heart and the mind of Christ, which means breaking out of our comfort zone and helping others recover from their weaknesses. To welcome them, to take the extra step, to encourage them to go to confession. And like the good shepherd, to rejoice with the coming back of the lost sheep. So who are the lost sheep in our home, in our workplace, and in our community? Let's resolve now to be the good shepherd for them, to recover them for our Lord. And now we turn to Mary, the mother of the good shepherd, our mother immaculate. She's without sin. And that is what she wants for us, her children, that we be free from all stain of sin. Mary, our mother, you are full of grace. Keep reminding us that what comes first is the grace of God. 
his grace that will remedy our discouragement and help us to work on our renewal. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.